Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Today our topic is three days of darkness and release of the giants. They are tied together. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through all of this today. This might have to be a part one and a part two. Nevertheless, let's get going. Okay, first of all, in looking at the prophecies, looking at the Bible prophecies, there appears to be two kinds of a darkness coming. One is the last 72 hours before Armageddon or the day of the Lord, I'll show you. And another one, like in the days of Moses, which can be felt, I'll show you from the scriptures. They could not get out of the bed for three days. That's a pretty serious darkness. Okay, from this is a new prophecy from um, You Be Ready, uh, January 13, 2024. Uh, Byron uh, Sur- Searle is his name. So Revelation 10.3 says, And he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth, and when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Now, every prophecy student has been wondering what in the world did the seven thunders utter. Well, now we know they uttered, release the giants. Again, I'll show you. So this comes from, from Brian Searle. While in prayer, a vision opened to me of an ordinary neighborhood. I found myself standing in this neighborhood with people standing outside, staring at the sky. They were looking at something unusual, excited, jumping, loudly exclaiming, pointing upward. I looked up and I saw a blue sky suddenly come alive with colorful auroras, streaking and moving wildly across the sky. It was breathtaking and beautiful. While observing, I suddenly heard a very loud voice that at the same time sounded like great thundering. I heard it shout out from the heavens, saying, Unbind the giants. I heard this loud thundering sound shout out again and again, Unbind the giants. Unbind the giants. I looked right at the people and was surprised to see that no one else seemed to have heard the voice. I, it, it appeared that only I heard the loud thundering sound, but no voice. Oh, excuse me. It appeared they only heard the loud thundering, but not the voice. After a time of thundering, and all were still looking at the sky, it suddenly began to turn dark, while still day. This darkness, however, was a very different type of darkness. Not the normal darkness of night. This was a thick, tangible darkness that could be felt. So this is talking about as in the days of Moses could be felt all around you like a substance so thick that it seemed like you could cut it. You couldn't see your hand out in front of your face. Suddenly I was somehow given the ability to see through this darkness like a light came on just for me to see. In front of me was a six-foot-tall man, and I watched him change or morph into a 30-foot-tall being. I'm going to say that again. A six-foot-tall man morphed into a 30-foot tall being. Now, I believe that pre-flood people, some of them were that large. Some of the giants talked about in the Bible were that large. His eyes were black. His physique was of a giant bodybuilder. And it was yelling, bellowing out loud, grunting, growling sounds. I heard more loud sounds in response to this one in charge and saw three more in the neighborhood. They were all male. Their clothes, when they were six foot tall, had torn now and fallen off when they grew, with only covering around their waist and hips. I understood that this event was witnessing was the three days of darkness that had been spoken of. During this darkness, I heard people scream and cry out in pain and terror, and later there was silence. After the three days had passed and darkness dissipated, I saw all the damage and destruction. It looked like a tornado had passed through, houses torn apart, roofs gone, cars crushed, trees uprooted and thrown about, street lights broken off, lying in the streets. Some houses and properties were destroyed and others not much damage at all. I saw dead bodies lying all around, arms and legs gone from torsos, people torn in half, some half eaten. People tried to shoot the giants with guns, but they couldn't see in the darkness. 
So they don't. I said they could only shoot in the direction of the giants that came upon them or the houses. Their skin was tough and thick. Bullets had little effect or no effect, and wouldn't cause any injury. <clears throat> the giants killed at will, roaming through the town, leaving a path of destruction and death. I was not shown what happened to the giants or whether I went after the darkness dissipated. I was shown this in one city, but knew it was happening in all the cities in America. The Lord revealed to me that these giants were given normal appearances in order to move into various positions and locations to wait for the time of the seven thunders when it would be shouted to unbind the giants. The vision ended. The Lord then spoke these words, My son, I have shown you this to prepare my remnant for the days of the giants. These creatures will have no soul and no mercy. They are being released to bring a just judgment upon mystery of Babylon, that would be America, the foul nation who refuses to repent. My son, these creatures are the work of fallen ones, working in secret locations. They have cloned thousands and thousands of them. They are taken to South America and moved into North America in caravans. They are shape shifters and can appear as a normal person. They are now planted in every large city and soon will be in every small city, town, and village. During the three days of darkness, they will shape shift into beings ranging in heights up to 30 feet tall. My son, shout repent now to the lost people. For when the shout to unbind the giants happens, Many will be unaware. Many will go into the darkness, not being able to see, but the giants will see perfectly in the dark and will destroy them. The giants are drawn to light. <clears throat> so cover your windows <clears throat> so no light will be seen. I say again, repent now. Turn from your wicked ways. I bound them until the time of the end. The shout of the seven thunders to unbind the giants will soon come. Be ready, my children. I love you. Now jump to part of one of Vicky Parnell's messages. They looked human, yet their stance, their fierceness, and their evil power radiated just from looking at the screen. It was not regular human power. This was beyond human. It was beyond human responsibility, reasonable expectations. I saw enough to know that they are perfecting giants in Antarctica. The Lord continued, Please pay attention now. I show you the seven thunders. I heard such crashing and bouts of thunderbolts of lightning. I heard these words from the thunder and lightning. It was a mixture of thunder and voices saying, Release the giants upon the earth. Now, let me just say, I know this sounds like Marvel comics. I know this sounds rather unbelievable. But you have to understand, in the last days, Jesus is doing everything he can trying to get the people to repent and receive him. And that includes loosing these giants on the earth. Yes, they're going to kill a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of damage. But hopefully, this will also get some others to repenting and asking Jesus into their heart. Now, second thing I want to say is, the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. So just here, and there's more. Just here is already two people saying the same things, and I'm pretty sure they haven't got together and cooked this all up, meaning you can count on it. Let's go on. Now, as further confirmation that the Seven Thunders actually said, release the giants. Here's an email I've covered before, and this lady said she was given release the giants way back in, well, what was it, 2022? No, 2018. Joel 2.5 says, this is describing this Nephilim, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, they shall leap. Like the noise of flame, a fire that devoureth the stubble, a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people should be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. Now I believe that happens in, in Isaiah 30 verse 26, and I'm going to show you that on the chart in just a second. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone in his own ways, and they shall not break their ranks. They do as they're told. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his paths. When he falls on a sword, they shall not be wounded. Again, armadillo-type skin. 
They shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall, they shall climb upon the houses, they shall enter at the windows like a thief. Now let me show you where I think this happens. If there's actually two, three days of darkness, and that may be the case, the two witnesses are released here in the middle of the tribulation. And I'm going to read for you a scripture in just a second that seems to say that this will be the time. But then there's another type place where it says the sun goes dark. Well, the sun goes dark. First of all, it gets seven times hotter, Isaiah 30, verse 26, here in the fourth vial. Then the fifth, sixth, and seventh vial, remember the voice said, the seven seals play over seven years, the seven trumpets play over seven months, the seven vials play over seven days. So that is three days or 72 hours. This is when the sun totally goes black, a sackcloth of hair, Revelation 6.12 says. And it never relights because it does not compete with Jesus. We've talked about this a lot. So it appears that there could be two sets of three days of darkness. There is no question this is coming. And there is no question this is coming. So I put three possibilities on the chart. Now, let's go on. When are the giants released? Well, I can't give you the year, month, day, and hour, but I can give you an idea as it relates to the charts. Okay. Revelation 10, 1. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and the rainbow went on his head, and his face were as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. Notice it was open. It didn't have to be unsealed. And when he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth, he cried seven thunders out of their voices. So we have a mighty angel. We have a little book open, then seven thunders. Now, Revelation is not necessarily chronological, but there are a few places where it is chronological. And this appears to be one of them. The angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and who created heaven, and the things that therein are on the earth, and the things that therein are on the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. What does that mean? That means that it's at the very end. Okay, so the little book open tells us this little book open, John is commanded. Here, I think I've got the scripture for it. Uh, yes, okay. And the voice when you, uh, I heard it from heaven spake to me again, said, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel. So he took the little book, and it was in his mouth sweet as honey. As soon as he had eaten it, my belly was bitter. He says, thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Now, since the two witnesses are released here at the beginning of the middle of the tribulation, because it says very clearly that they prophesy 1,203 score days, that's the last three and a half years of the tribulation. So probably it's associated with the two witnesses being released and also the giants be released on about or around the same time. However, in other words, apparently this is a, a darkness that can be felt, something like what happened in the days of Moses. This may be simply the sun going out. And apparently it happens twice. Bible's not clear on that, so we're not dead certain. Now, let me jump to something else that ties in. So, Lindsay Williams says the elite consider themselves to be gentlemen and consider it poor, poor, poor sportsmanship not to tell the public what they're doing. So, they tell the public by movies, cartoons, and news, just like they make them believe it is all science fiction when much of what they're saying is actually true. But they don't tell the whole truth. All right, now, with that in mind, I did a research, and there are many movies talking about Time Machine, many more movies talking about a looking glass that can see into the future, and making clones, but today our topic is Nephilim Giants. Many of the movies are made about Nephilim as giants. So, what they're saying is, yeah, it exists, but we don't have the truth. Now, let's go on. Now, let's go to Joel 2.1. This is describing the giants, the Nephilim. Blow the trumpet in Zion, that would be Israel. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now, probably we're about three days away from the return of Jesus for Armageddon. 
a day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds, and of thick darkness. Now, is that the darkness you can feel, or is that just the sun going out? Well, again, we're not exactly certain. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, strong. There has never been the light, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Probably it's talking about the Nephilim, which are half fallen angel and half human. The fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. That's probably like what hit Maui with the blue laser. The land is at the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is the appearances of horses and horse men. Now, is that a horse with a man on it? Or is that a horse that is part man, part horse? I believe it's probably part man, part horse. Now, let's go to 2021 Bat Stevens. Very powerful vision. I was asleep and taken out of my body this place underneath the earth. I saw computers. Then I felt of a hand on my shoulder and a voice close behind me say, Watch and take note. It is much to your advantage to know the truth. Take a closer look. I could zoom in and I saw a black box with many knobs and controls. The voice spoke again and said, It will be a commanding device for giants. He called them Nephilim. Now remember what the scripture just said, they will not break their ranks. They will not fight each other. They will do as they're told. This explains it. I saw cots and tables on wheels. With the bodies under the covers, they were wheeled across the room. Robots were escorted in and put on tables. They were making robots, high advanced technology robots. I saw men in white coats looking at the black box, turning knobs. I heard a shrill whistle, but this not be heard by regular human ears. I heard it because I was in the spirit. I saw a vision of like a TV screen similar to a computer screen, and I saw giants appear on the screen. They looked human, yet their stance, their fierceness, and their evil power radiated just from looking at the screen. It was not regular human power. This was beyond human. It was beyond human reasonable expectations, and I saw enough to know that they are perfecting giants down underneath in Antarctica. This will be revealed. This is coming to Earth. The black machine moved quite slowly. All of a sudden, the screen went black, and the Lord said, You have been given this vision to share precisely as you have heard and seen. You are to give this precisely with no big explanations, just as you were shown. The Lord continued, Please pay attention. Now I show you the seven thunders. In that moment, I heard such crashing and bouts of thunder, bolts of lightning all around through the whole place. Massive crashing of thunder and lightning. I heard these words from thunder and lightning. It was a mixture of thunder and voices saying, Release the giants upon the earth. That's three people saying, The seven thunders said, Release the giants. Now, I showed you this. This is the second witness. Another witness, so there is no question when we're talking about it. Now, to another article, good describe the size of the beings found in the stasis chambers. What stasis? In other words, they're apparently quite old, but they've kind of been in like in suspended animation like we see in the Star Trek and stuff where they're thousands of years old, but they haven't aged, okay? Found in stasis chambers when they were first discovered in the 19th century all over the planet. And to look down, they saw these very tall beings, or very large giant humans, with reddish beards. These tall, red-headed, red-beard groups were in Europe and South and North America. And apparently, at one time before the last Ice Age, apparently, they had a very large area that they ruled. Good gave examples of stasis chambers that had been found all around the world. Some were still operating with different modern human groups that had learned to use the technology. Others had been damaged and the beings in the stasis had died as a result. Giants had been in hibernation in these stasis chambers for thousands of years, are now awakening, and are being sought out by elite military forces. These awakened giants are allegedly being captured and held captive by powerful global elite groups who do not want the rest of humanity to learn the truth. Awakened giants are being actively sought after by elite global groups of special forces all over the world. When captured, they are taken to secret detention facilities. 
not allowed to interact with the general public, elite U.S. military, locate the giants. A 12-foot giant U.S. Special Forces, the informant, claimed that the giant had killed nine members of the elite team sent to capture it, and it took a second team to arrive and finally kill the giant. Space Secret Space Program whistleblower Corey Good was among the first to publicly disclose the existence of these stasis chambers that were holding perfectly preserved giants for thousands of years in an August 4, 2015 interview on the popular show Cosmic Disclosure. Good discuss how he had ac- accessed information on, quote, smart glass pads during his covert service about these sleeping giants and the technology of the stasis chambers that were preserving them. They were beings that they found beneath the surface of the earth, usually underneath mountains, burial mounds, Indian burial mounds that were not dead, but were quite alive. They called them stasis beings, and it turned out that they'd used technology that had been there long prior from this group they called the ancient builder race. So it didn't put the beings in stasis that a lot of us would think of as being frozen. But it changed the way they experienced time. They would probably go to sleep for maybe 20 minutes and 30,000 years or so would pass by. Now, Matthew 24, 37 says, as in the days of Noah, what would they do in the days of Noah? They were having the sons of man come down and mating with the daughters of men and their offspring were giants. Go read it, Genesis chapter 6. Here's where it says it. I'm going to skip it, though. I'm running out of time. The article says stasis chambers. Sleeping ancient giants ready to awaken are secretly located and imprisoned by this global elite. Supposedly, this is a picture of one of them. Another picture of some kind of riding around his groin area. Uh, I know that Vicki Goforth Parnell talks about that she's seen this riding. Matter of fact, I sent this over to her in an email asking her if this is what the Nephilim riding looked like. I don't know. We'll see if I'll get an answer. Then you go to Revelation chapter 10. It talks about the seven thunders. Seal up those things with the seven thunders uttered. Now, let's go to the article. Horrible giant defeated in the name of Jesus. This was a dream. He and his best friend Chase were out at our chicken coop closing for the night. Suddenly a giant came out of the woods, menacing, wearing animal skin for clothing, with dirty long hair and a beard. He beat on the metal door of a chicken coop, then he stomped out their fire and hit my friend on the head with it and knocked him out. Reed bravely jumped uh, onto the giant, but was instantly flung off to the ground. He got up and ran in terror back to our house to get help. He grabbed a semi-automatic rifle and an extra clip, then he ran back outside to the chicken coop and found the giant was dragging Chase into the woods to kill him. He emptied the clip into the giant, changed clips, did the same thing again, but nothing happened. The giant acted like he was not even being shot. So he returned the rifle round and began to beat him with the butt of the rifle. The giant let go of Chase's leg, but only to strike Reed with the back of his hand slap and sent him flying back several feet. He got back up and shouted in the voice, the blood of Jesus is against you in his name. I command you to let him go. The giant immediately stopped dragging Chase and made some strange loud groan sound with a deep voice. Then he dropped to the ground and appeared to be dead. Reed picked up Chase, who was still unconscious, and carried him into the house. One more. Lance Woods, 2018. Had the same dream three times. Soldiers were coming through my neighborhood. Many homes had already been vacated for a long time. The soldiers were rounding up people that remained. Those who didn't get on the truck without incident or tried to run were simply shot and killed immediately. Bodies left where they fell. I woke up to screaming and bullhorns. I looked out my window and saw the soldiers hitting one home at a time. I woke my 17-year-old daughter and her friend. We snuck out of the house being quite staying downwind. The soldiers apparently had super hearing, super smell, and could see in the dark with that night vision. No reasoning, emotion, or empathy. There were see the, the the words and the prophecies and the dreams and the visions confirm each other. Many people shot the soldiers, but to no effect. They healed instantly right before our eyes. The only way to kill them was a headshot with a high caliber rifle to the head. 
We could not talk or make any noise while we made our, down to, our way down to the embankment to the river. We wanted to get into the water to help mask our smell. I slipped down the embankment making noise, cut my shin. I remember the sound of the leaves crackling and the sound of the, the smell of the dirt as I slid down the embankment. The girls, girls looked at me in fear, knowing that a soldier heard the no, noise. They quietly slid into the water. I froze, hiding behind a tree, as one soldier came listening and sniffing, investigating the noise. He was six and a half or seven foot tall with muscles like a weightlifter and covered in metallic battle armor, overlapping like an armadillo. His eyes were red. His face had a beastly humanoid appearance. He scanned the area. He was ready to shoot. I was ready to shoot to protect my daughter. I knew the shot would draw other soldiers and I would be dead, but my daughter would hopefully live. The soldier turned and walked away. Now, what is all this saying? It's saying that <clears throat> apparently we don't have long. I want to think that this is 10 years away. It's probably more like some of it even coming in 2024 or 25 or 6 or 7. Not long. What's the whole point? The point is, I don't think our goal should be to try to live a long life. I think our goal should be to try to win as many souls as we possibly can. As many as we possibly can. And then when our time comes, our time comes. But we've just got to give our heart to Jesus. The whole point of the tribulation is to pull the rug out from under the people that think they don't need Jesus. They've got a good job. They've got a good dry bed to sleep in, plenty of food, plenty of money, nice car. They don't need Jesus. So God is taking their wonderful comfortable lifestyle away so that they'll begin to seek the Lord. That's really the point of all of this. Jesus sending all of this difficulty. See, for 2,000 years, God has offered the blood of his son, Jesus. And when someone accepts it, they get eternal life. It's a free gift. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. And for 2,000 years, sad to say, most of the people on the earth have chosen not to accept the free gift of God, the blood of Jesus. So basically what the tribulation is, is God says, okay, uh, you don't want my gift? You don't want my son's blood? You, want, you don't want eternal life? You choose the devil? So, okay, I'll give you the devil. So for at least the last three and a half years, the devil gets to rule the world. And he's given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power is given to him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. But the point is, he's trying to get people to repent and receive Jesus. So the first thing I have to say is, ask Jesus to forgive your sins. It doesn't hurt. Your teeth don't fall out. You don't die. Ask Jesus to forgive your sins. Second thing, I suggest you get ready. I think everybody should have some gold and silver. Everybody ought to have at least a handful of gold and a handful of silver, minimum. For that, I'll send you to prophecyclubgold.com. Prophecyclubgold.com. Next thing is, I think that the best famine food, God's famine food, is wheat. But you've got to get the right kind. And for that, I'll send you to josephskitchen.com josephskitchen.com also when the 34 prophecies come to pass that say that there's going to be suitcase nukes hitting America you want one of these on your cars and they also have uh, one for your house empshield.com empshield.com promo code prophecy they have videos up there shows you how to put it on it takes you about 10 minutes to put it on Hopefully, the plan is anyway, that when the suitcase nukes go off and it fries all the computer chips, that means all of the cars, most of them that have key fobs won't even open. If they could get them open, they're not going to start. The only way to get them to start again is replace every computer chip in the car. As you know, that would be an impossibility. 
So the best thing to do is have something to stop it. So as they say, the one -eyed, in, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. In the land of no car is starting and your car starts, you're going to have a big advantage. And the whole objective is not to run away so that my family can survive, but to be there to lay hands on people, to see the power of God, to see people healed, set free, and saved.